This is an insanely fast Lego car because Project Air challenged us to the world's fastest Lego RC car. And we want to absolutely demolish his speed because for us to win, we just have to beat 42 kilometers an hour, which is like 26 miles an hour. And I mean, no disrespect when I say this, but I'm pretty sure we could tie a string to this Lego car and run that fast. Another channel called Donut Media actually got up to 41 miles an hour in their Lego Bugatti, but that still doesn't sound that fast. So we're gonna set a goal for ourselves that to truly win this challenge, we're gonna double Project Air speed, which means we have to hit 52 miles an hour. Or if you wanna sound faster than you really went, that's 84 kilometers an hour. It's a life pro tip for you. And if we actually do hit our target speed, we're gonna crank this thing all the way up and see what happens. Now, let's set a few ground rules because we all know that the comment section is gonna be full of people complaining about us using illegal Lego building techniques. There's only one rule that Project Air gave for this. You have to have a car with four wheels that touch the ground at all times. So we're gonna have to round out the rest of those. He used Legos for his chassis, so we're gonna use Legos for our complete chassis. He used Lego wheels, so we're gonna use Legos for our wheels. But all of his driveline electronics and servos were hobby grades, so that's what we're gonna use. But we are gonna add in the bonus of using Legos for some aerodynamics. It's a little bonus. And since I wanted to go so much faster than him, I had to make my own wheels. This involved an actual Lego circle plate and a few small 3D printed modifications so it can actually bolt up to the drive line. The 3D printed parts I made also had Lego patterns designed into them so they would kind of click into place. I also had to custom cut my own foam donuts to bond on these wheels. Uh, and this foam is actually pretty similar to what you see on real RC foam wheels, except it looks like trash when I do it. And that's because I'm having to compile them from half inch thick sheets of foam since I can't cut or process any material any thicker. And we're using this foam in the first place because traditional rubber Lego wheels at the speeds we're going for are just gonna balloon up and explode and I'm gonna lose control as if I need any help losing control. But since I used this Lego circle plate for the majority of the rim, this is a Lego wheel-ish. And as any real racer would say, any real racer, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Now my electronics are nearly identical to the ones he used except I pulled them out of my Creighton EXB and I think he got his out of a limitless. Either way, I think they're actually the same thing. And I actually used these electronics in one of my fan car builds that gave me an insane zero to 60 time. So you could probably feel how confident I am that we're gonna absolutely demolish this record. And per our rules, the chassis is made of a bunch of Legos. This thing is probably a few pounds worth of Legos. This took forever. Most of that time was searching through our disorganized piles of bricks scattered all over the place trying to find the right part. I buried the motor mount and all the electronics deep down in the chassis in the very unlikely event that I crash just to keep them protected and the battery itself is actually strapped in because if we crash bad and that goes flying out, I don't want to start a fire. Finally, we added some nice little aero improvements in the form of a nose cone we dug up from an old giant Lego plane and some little tail fins from miscellaneous leftovers. And last things last, we need a driver for this thing. So I picked Joe Dirt because that one time he beat Kid Rock in a drag race. Enough small talk, let's give this thing a proper shakedown. heavy. Oh no! Right away! <laughs> what happened? What was it? It's pretty okay. It's pretty okay. It didn't take long for tragedy to strike with this pile of garbage. This thing is awful. It's actually worse than awful. I had to carry the remnants back in a shirt hammock like a toddler, but I could actually get it back together for a little bit more testing before just succumbing to the fact that it's a terrible car and it's never gonna succeed. No, man, Jet, this car sucks. 
first, the front end is just way too narrow because I wanted it designed for aerodynamic efficiency at high speed. But that doesn't matter at all when it's unstable like one of those death trap three wheelers from the 1980s. Secondly, the front wheels were actually offset by one row of bricks. Uh, I didn't fix it because I miscalculated how wide it needed to be and I knew you wouldn't notice from the videos. Third, my center of gravity was just way too high. The ESC is mounted above the battery and I wrapped a bunch of heavy bricks around it to try and protect it in the event of a crash, but it actually just caused more crashes. And my wife pointed out that it looks like that ladder truck from Arrested Development. We needed a complete redesign to make the center of gravity much lower and the front end much wider. So after a bit of CAD magic and some 3D printing, we were ready to get building again. And this time I am going to glue a few of these critical bricks together. But before you complain about breaking rules and illegal Lego techniques, remember the only rule Project Air gave us is you have to have a car with four wheels that touch the ground at all times. Four wheels that touch the ground. Now this build was substantially more stable. So I did some warm up laps, but tragedy struck once again. We had a catastrophic wheel hub failure because they were designed and not properly engineered. Looking back, this wall section was always way too thin and would have never worked in the long run. So we updated the design to include a lot more meat here. This also meant I had to cut more foam wheels with those circular dies I had made and super glue everything back together. And before everyone points out the band-aid, yes, I did cut myself with the razor sharp circular dies in the process. Now for round three with our beefy front wheel hubs. This time we were looking okay, but the car was really unstable over 30 miles an hour. Oh, and that's right by the way, we've already passed Project Air's original speed during the warmups and maybe a few crashes in the process. We had broken quite a few parts by now, so it really wasn't nearly as easy as I was expecting, but I do know she still got a lot more speed in her. So we went back and added some custom formed Lego aerodynamics. These plate wings are not going to be efficient, but they should help stabilize the car. If you recall from my dragster video, we put the rear wing really far back because the drag actually helps it track straighter, kind of like a badminton birdie. After the wind died down and things warmed up a little bit, we were back out there for some more testing. And this time we selected a new driver. We're going with uh, sausage feet flower head. Obviously my son's decision. And this time we brought a chase car to try and get some super sweet action shots and maybe a little bit of drag racing between the two. But it was really hard to get good chase footage when there's a huge performance disparity between both cars. The Lego car really isn't made for handling and the Vendetta is just so fast and quick off the line. It was easy for it to run away and leave me in the dust. So most of the chase footage is more like open parking lot footage. On a side note, my son slammed this vendetta into a curb at full throttle and it somersaulted like six feet up in the air but somehow it still runs just fine nothing truly broke after just kind of shifting things back in place this thing is incredibly tough okay now to get back on topic the wings actually helped a lot but they weren't without issue the wing liked to fall off after just a few minutes of running and we had yet another wheel failure and this time it was the actual lego wheel plate itself that broke no telling if it was the immense amount of downforce from our Lego spoilers or if it was just poor craftsmanship. Probably the latter. However, by this point, we're up to 37 miles an hour. So we're getting close to Donut Media at least. So we went back and doubled up the plates for the front rims and built a new wheel assembly on the side that failed. And I want to note that these wheels don't look that true, but we're still going to send it this time for some night testing. And we are now faster than Donut Media's Bugatti with a scorching speed of 48 miles an hour. Unfortunately, I was still having a lot of issues with stability over 40 miles an hour now because of a lack of rear end grip. This car has too high of a drag to downforce ratio, which means that as I hit a certain speed, the drag force actually overcomes the traction force and the rear tires break loose, sending it out of control and into PC. 
pieces. A big part of this is because the car is just not aerodynamically efficient. But I did also notice that there was a very, very small amount of negative rake, which may be creating a small amount of lift. And while the rear spoiler did give me a fair amount of downforce, it did so while adding a ton of drag, but we still wanted more speed, which led to us building an actual double element rear wing like you would see on a real race car. These are real airfoils. This should give us a lot more of the downforce we want, but with a lot less drag. And I fixed the front end to give me positive rake so that hopefully this large flat underbody is not giving us any lift at all. And back to the track we go. The first one was excellent. But that is not double project air speed, so our work is not done. So we lined up for another run. And this time we hit 55 miles an hour, successfully destroying our target, but also losing control while braking and slamming the rear end of the car into a curve. Destroyed, man. Is the motor still on? Uh, look at that. Toast. And I saw another one. Toast, even the side. I feel like it's so Shoot out the side. There it is. That piece over there. Now this speed's actually limited by a throttle delay I have through the radio system. So I know we have a ton more speed left in her. So we're gonna turn this thing all the way up and see what we end up with. And this thing can absolutely roast the tires. It also gives them a nice little rounded edge. Now, the center of gravity improvements worked really well, but you can still flip it if you get too carried away. After a bit too much hooting around, we destroyed the rear wheels this time. And the front wheels are starting to tear themselves up, but that was actually from the prior speed runs. We saw that happening, and I'm really surprised they didn't rip the foam off. I think it was actually the rocking and flipping that finished off the rear wheels. If Project Air does come back to try and beat us, I do think my next iteration will be a wild departure from this one. But that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching and we will see you soon.